This is the Fulton Classic insole. This is the Fulton Athletic insole. And these are the insoles that come with your Nikes, Adidas, and New Balances. They're flat, they're thin, they're flimsy. Two weeks ago, Fulton Insoles sent me both their classic and athletic insoles to try out and review. And I've been wearing them for the last week. So today, I'm giving you my thoughts on the Fulton Insoles. What's up, y'all? It's Daniel, your Shumaye, and last week I was in Dayton, Ohio for a work event. From Thursday through Sunday, I was on my feet a lot, and I thought, what better time and place to try out these Fulton insoles? Now, as I mentioned, Fulton sent me their insoles free of charge in exchange for this review. So while this video isn't a paid sponsorship, I wanted to be 100% transparent with this video. As mentioned on their website, Fulton is a modern brand of arch support designed to improve whole body wellness from the ground up every day. They envision a world where the shoes we wear are good for both our bodies and the planet. By connecting arch support and everyday wellness, we're creating a sturdier foundation for a healthier future. So how is Fulton doing this? They use regenerative plant-based materials, fair labor practices, and electricity powered factories. They are also carbon negative, meaning everything from creating to shipping actively removes carbon emissions from the atmosphere. The materials used to construct the insoles are vegan leather made from cactus, organic cotton, natural foam derived from tree sap, and pressed cork harvested from tree bark. Cork bark is harvested in a way that allows the tree it came from to live for centuries, removing tons of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Both the classic and athletic insoles were designed by doctors, require no trimming to fit, and come with a 90-day comfort guarantee. They are designed for daily wear, support all arch types, and the insoles will custom mold to support you based on your unique arches, gait, pattern, and walking style. All right, let's talk about my real life experiences. Fulton says that after about 10 hours of wear, the insoles cork base will mold to properly support your unique feet. They also strongly suggest keeping the insoles in the same pair of shoes. As per their frequently asked question page, the insoles will mold to the shape of your feet based on the way you walk in a specific pair of shoes. So regularly moving them between shoes won't provide optimal support and may impact the duration that the insoles last. As we'll get into, I didn't exactly follow their recommendations, but I think it was important to try these insoles out on different types of shoes so I could offer a more thorough review. On Thursday, I wore the insoles with the Nike Air Jordan 2 J Balvin. Like many, I have gone on record as saying the early Air Jordans are not comfortable for lifestyle wear. So I figured this would be a good first test for these insoles. I wore them all day long as I drove, walked, sat, and walked some more throughout the day. And I have to tell you that this might have been the most comfortable time I've ever wore Jordan 2s. The insoles were not squishy, they were not bouncy, they were not pillowy, but they were firm. They supported my feet and I did not feel much, if any, foot fatigue by the end of the day. I didn't have sore ankles, sore feet, sore legs, sore calves, anything like that. Normally, I can only last about four to six hours wearing Jordan 2s, Jordan 1s, Jordan 3s, Jordan 4s, etc. I usually put in a different insole and I can increase that. And with these, I wore them pretty much 12 hours top to bottom with zero complaints. On Friday, I wore the Nike Air Max 1 Big Bubble without replacing the insole. I wanted to see how it felt in comparison to what I wore the previous day. It felt fine. No complaints and no thoughts of whether the shoe was better without the folding insoles or how I needed them but I knew that later in the weekend, I would be trying these shoes out with the Fulton insoles. Saturday was a true test as I wore the Mischief Big Red Boots. Now, these are the insoles that come with the boots. I inserted the Fultons and wore them all day long. And boy, am I glad I did that. These big red boots aren't incredibly comfortable, but I will say from the ankle down, it was fine. The insoles really added some support. It was firm. I didn't feel any ankle or foot fatigue. Where the pain did come into play was the shins because, well, as you can see, they're really long and tall and there's not a lot of give. So my shins kept hitting into the front part of that boot. And by the end of the day, I had, well, I had a scab on both legs because, well, I had started to cut into my skin like a blister that just wouldn't heal. I wore the shoes all day long, inside, outside. It was fantastic. It was wonderful. 
But yes, I am so very glad that I put those insoles in because I'm not sure that I would have been able to handle both the shin pain and the extra feet pain that I probably would have experienced. Sunday saw the return of the Big Bubble Air Maxes, this time with the insoles. Shockingly, this was the least comfortable shoe to wear with the insoles, and the reason may not be what you think it is. When I put the insoles in the Jordans and the big red boots, they fit fine. There was plenty of room for the soles and for that little arch that you find on these insoles. However, the Air Maxes already fit pretty snugly. I wore my true to size, but I really felt that my foot was super close to the upper. It was hitting the top of my feet and I didn't have a lot of wiggle room and I had more lockdown in the midfoot, which you know I don't enjoy. And since I already wear my Air Maxes with the factory insoles and are just fine in the comfort department, I'm not really sure I need to put the insoles into the Air Maxes because it's not any more comfortable. In fact, it makes them less comfortable because there's not a lot of room in the shoe and well, I'm just not all about that. Finally, over these last few days, I've been wearing the Adidas Dill Samba with the Fulton insoles. Now I have always enjoyed the look of the Samba and the Gazelle, but the insoles are almost paper thin and offer no real support. Matched with a lean midsole and older comfort technology and my delicate feet cry out for some added support like boost, react, or absorb. I thought the true test was gonna be the Jordan 2s or even the big red boots, no. Where these insoles really shined was with the Sambas. These are the insoles that come standard with the Samba. You can see they're really thin. They're super flimsy and they're not comfortable at all. So by adding these Fulton insoles, look at this. It's significantly thicker. Yes, it has that cork. It's way more comfortable and I can wear these Sambas all day long. No foot fatigue, no soreness, no itchiness, nothing. It's fantastic. It's almost as if you are incorporating current modern technology, maybe futuristic, with an older technology that is more fitting. You put them together and it's a fantastic fit. As I've mentioned in this video already and I've time and time again have said, I have delicate feet. I know, just count it for me working from home for 15, 20 years. Regardless, I'm glad that I can put the insole in because it makes the Sambas more comfortable. I can wear Sambas, I can wear Gazelles. I don't have to worry about, will this shoe make my feet hurt? Because honestly, I can just put in some insoles, these Fulton insoles, and they make them fit and feel just fine. So after all of that, do I have your curiosity, maybe your attention, wondering which insoles you should buy? The classic insole was designed for shoes that have narrower toe boxes, like daily wear or lifestyle shoes. And the athletic insole was designed for shoes with wider toe boxes, like athletic or performance shoes. If you prefer to decide based on your intended activities for walking and lower impact, Fulton recommends the classic. For higher impact, the athletics to play. Both the classic and athletic insoles retail for 60 US American dollars, but you can grab either of them for 48 US American dollars on their website. So what are my thoughts on the Fulton insoles? I really only have one con when it comes to these insoles. It would seem I overpronate when I stand and walk. Overpronation is when the mid to inside of the heel makes contact with the ground first, called the heel strike. And it took me wearing these Fulton insoles to find all of this out. So I suppose this con is really more of a pro, as it helped me discover why I tend to get skin irritations, shin splints, and other feet and leg related issues. Besides that, I love these insoles. I've waxed poetic about Superfeet Blue and have also enjoyed sole insoles, but I would say because of the comfort provided, the price point, and their commitment to using materials and manufacturing processes that are good for our planet, consider me all aboard the Fulton insole train. I definitely will be recommending these insoles to all of my friends, family, and of course, to you watching right now. I can tell you that these insoles will live inside my Jordans, Sambas, Gazelles, and any other shoe that doesn't offer much in terms of support. I may dress and act like I'm way younger than I am, but my feet certainly act their age and I most definitely need more support as I age gracefully into full debonair zaddy status. Fulton insoles can be purchased in store at select REIs, Nordstrom's, and of course, their website, walkfulton.com. And that's it for my review of Fulton insoles. If you have any questions or want to know more details about my experience wearing these insoles, leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to mix it up with you. So to all of you out there, wherever you are, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to Just Chill. Till the next episode.